Energy clearing is crucial right now, especially if you're watching this video while we're still in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic. But even if you're catching this video afterwards, here's something you have to remember on your spiritual awakening path. Having a daily energy clearing routine is essential for you to stay balanced in your mind, body, and soul. In this video, I'm going to help you figure out what energy clearing really is and why it's important, and you may be surprised by the things I say. And then I'm going to share my top five practical energy clearing practices that you can use in your everyday life, even if you're really busy. Coming up. Hello, beautiful soul. This is Christina Lopes, the Heart Alchemist, here to help you open your heart, heal your past, and live with purpose. If you're new to my videos, click on that subscribe button and also on the bell so you get notified as soon as I publish new content. And also follow me on Instagram, where I have tips and advice that you're not going to find here on YouTube. All right, let's get started with this video. Part one is what is energy clearing? <laughs> Okay, so I, I see energy clearing a little bit differently from other spiritual teachers. You'll probably hear around, usually what, what uh, energy clearing means is that you're going to get rid of the negative energy and you just want to bring in positive energy. So energy clearing usually revolves around getting rid of negative energy, okay? And that's usually what's seen as energy clearing. But I, I see things very differently. So when I talk about energy clearing, what I'm really talking about, and as you get more experienced on your spiritual journey, you're going to tap into your power as an alchemist, an energy alchemist, okay? And so what you have to remember about energy clearing, clearing when properly done is that energy clearing moves, circulates, and transmutes energy, <laughs> okay? So this is very different from just saying, I want to get rid of negative energy from me so that I have positive energy. It's very, very different when I say that energy clearing moves, circulates, and transmutes energy. Now, you may be saying, well, this may be just a question of semantics. <laughs> it's not a question of semantics. The reason that I use a different definition is because when we stick to the old way of seeing things, what we're doing is that we are creating a dissociation or a disintegration in us because we're constantly trying to push out what we call negative and welcoming in positive. So pushing out negative, welcoming in positive. But that always leads to problems because when you start to do this, you don't know how to work with the energy that may be negative. And if you don't know how to work with that energy, because guess what? If you're feeling it, it's in you. So you got to deal with it. <laughs> and if you, if you deny it or reject it or try and push it away, you may, may be missing an opportunity to understand what that energy is doing, what it's informing you of, and also how you can transmute it and move it within your body. So instead of pushing things away and just saying, I just want to clear myself of all the negative energy, no, we're going to come into more mature spiritual shoes and we're going to say that energy clearing is when I move, circulate, and transmute energy uh, in, in my body. Here's a little mantra that I like to use to reinforce this. So the mantra goes like this, what I deny, I don't heal. <laughs> okay, what I deny, I don't heal. So if you find yourself constantly fighting negative energy and trying to get rid of it, you are denying something, and if you're denying something, you can't heal it and you can't work with the energy, really. I have to accept to see in order to work with energy, okay? So when we're doing energy clearing, one of the first things that we have to consider is, you know, why do I feel a certain way? Why is this energy on me? Why is this energy part of my system right now? So all of these questions come in, but if you start asking these questions, you see how this is much more profound than just saying, I've got negative energy, I need to get rid of this. <laughs> well, no, yeah, you need to transmute it, you need to move it, you need to circulate it, but we also have to understand, wait a minute, I have this energy, it must be mine. There must be a part of me, or maybe there's a part of me that I'm not healing, that I'm not working with, all right? And so this second definition of energy clearing allows us to, to do our spiritual work in a sense of integration, accepting all parts of us, not pushing anything away, because when we push, we don't heal properly. Now I want to get a little deeper, and I want to go into these three words that I've been using, moving, circulating, and transmuting, okay? So the moving and the circulating means that 
I must move energy within me in order to clear it, okay? So clearing literally means that I'm moving energy. One of the key problems with us not feeling good in our energy or having things stuck in us is because the energy stagnates. And when the energy stagnates, that's when we start to feel a little off, okay? So moving and circulating simply means that in order for me to clear, I need to start moving energy in my system. And then the transmutation part is another part of the puzzle that I love to play with. And this is, I'm gonna give you one of the cardinal rules of an energy alchemist, okay? So here's a ding ding pro tip. Cardinal rule of an energy alchemist is that the energy alchemist never wastes energy. <laughs> the alchemist never wastes energy. So whereas before we used to think that energy clearing, let's just get rid of the negative, let it go, get rid of it. An energy alchemist understands that even the negative is energy. <laughs> and if you have this energy in you, you're going to learn how to move it and use it to your advantage, transmute it, meaning transform it. That's what an alchemist does. An alchemist transforms energy. An alchemist never wastes energy. So you can supposedly grab what's called negative energy, you can move it through you, and you can transform it into something positive or more ascended in its vibration. So you're, you're, you're starting to learn these things about being an energy alchemist. So much fun, isn't it? Now to part two, and that is why it's important to do energy clearings. <laughs> so really, this, this gets a little bit simple and sometimes a little complex, but the simple part of it is it's important to do energy clearing in the same way that it's important for you to take a shower every day. So spiritual hygiene, start to think of spiritual hygiene in the same way that you think of physical hygiene, okay? You take a shower every day, and if you don't take a shower, dirt is gonna start to accumulate on your skin, okay? And so with the energy clearing, it's the same thing. If you don't do energy clearing practices, you're going to start accumulating stagnant energy. And that's the issue, all right? So I'm gonna drop another ding ding <laughs> alchemy rule here. I'm, I'm gonna be dropping a few alchemy rules in this video. Here's another ding ding alchemy rule. And that is this, that energy wants to move, okay? <laughs> Energy wants to move. Energy does not like to be stagnant. And so when it stagnates in our system, that's when it leads to problems, okay? So energy stagnation is what leads to problems. It's what leads, of the, it's what leads to the breakdown of our mind, bodies, and etheric uh, energy fields, okay? It's stagnation of energy. It's not the energy itself. So our, our energy doesn't start to break down because I'm feeling anger or sadness or whatever other negative emotions people, people give these negative emotions. I'm using air quotes because there really is no such thing as negative emotions. But let's say you're feeling anger. It's not that anger itself is what's breaking down your system. That's not true because if anger is circulating, just as an example, if anger is circulating, it's eventually going to circulate and be transmuted. The problem occurs if you have anger within you that stagnates and stops somewhere. That's where the breakdown is gonna to start to occur in your mind, body, and etheric uh, layers, okay? So the crucial component about energy clearing is it keeps keeps your energy moving it keeps the energy constantly in flow which is the natural which is the nature of energy itself it likes to move and so as you move energy circulate and transmute it you keep your vibration high okay and this is crucial crucial ding ding <laughs> this is crucial for highly sensitive souls especially empaths Energy clearing is even more crucial. If you watch my videos, you're probably a highly sensitive soul. And it is crucial for highly sensitive souls to have a daily energy clearing practice because what happens is the more sensitive we are, the more we not only have to contend with our energies, but we also have to contend more with the energies of the world that sometimes get pro gets projected onto us. And if we're not very good at clearing, if we don't know we're empaths, then all of that gunk can start to accumulate and stagnate in us, okay? If you're not sure if you're an empath or a highly sensitive soul, I'm leaving a playlist, an empath playlist in the description box below where you can go into that in more detail. And here's another energy alchemist uh, uh, rule that I'm gonna drop here, ding, ding, another rule that I'm dropping here. And it pertains to why this is so important to clear your energy every day. It's because an energy alchemist never carries anything. 
They don't carry anything, <laughs> okay? So a master energy alchemist will not carry burdens. They don't carry any loads. They don't carry energy that, that's stagnant. They don't carry anything because the alchemist is always in a state of moving, circulating, transmuting energy, moving, circulating, transmuting, transmuting energy, okay? So here's another rule that may come in handy with you. When you start to feel yourself heavy, you know what that feels like, right? You're feeling heavy. It's like you feel depressed. It's like you want to lay on the couch all day long. When you feel your energy is off, you may be carrying energy. And you're going to remember this rule of the alchemist. Don't carry energy. You know how to move and circulate. And if you don't know, I'm going to show you in a little bit. Move and circulate that energy and transmute it, transform it into something of more higher vibration. Okay, so don't forget that rule about the energy alchemist. Now to part three, and that is my top five energy clearing practices. <laughs> now, what you may notice from this list is that it may be a little bit different from other spiritual teachers in terms of clearing energy because some of the recommendations I give you, they may not look like energy clearing exercises at all, <laughs> but they are, okay? So here are my top five spiritual clearing or energy clearing practices that you can do every day. The first one is pure intention. <laughs> it doesn't look like you're doing anything, but you are, okay? Pure intention is so powerful. That's why I put this as number one, because pure intention is, uh, I was going to say the most powerful, but they're all important, but pure intention is crucial. You have to know who you are on a soul level. You have to understand your sovereignty, your power, and you have to understand your power of awareness and intention. When you intend something, beautiful soul, and so it is, okay? So the power of intention is a crucial first step in clearing your energy or in healing, really, in healing work too. I talk about this in healing work. But specifically today, we're talking about energy clearing. Intention is crucial, absolutely crucial. The moment that you say out loud or in your mind, the moment that you say, it's my intention to clear my energy, it starts to happen. <laughs> Okay, so pure intention is the first, it is the most important, and you also have to remember that pure intention means that I take full responsibility for the clearing of my own energy, okay? There are a lot of practices out there where to clear your energy, you're constantly calling on angels and guides and all of that, and I will talk about that in a little while, but in this first one, you have to remember that you are 100% responsible for clearing your own energy, <laughs> okay? Okay? You can do this. You're powerful and your intention is what starts the process. Okay, So you got to take responsibility for clearing of that energy and all you have to do to take responsibility is just say every day when you're doing your energy practices or when you start to do specific practices, I'm going to talk about them more in, next, in the next ones. But when you start to do that work every morning or every night, when I, I recommend you do your energy clearings in the morning. You could do them more than once though. But in the morning is crucial because you start off your day the right way, okay? And so we, you always want to start energy clearing with pure intention. And it could be something like literally as simple as I intend to clear my energy. It is my intention to clear. Or just, in, you don't even have to say it's my intention. You can just say, I clear my energy now. <laughs> you see, it could be something as simple as this, okay? And then you can pair that statement with a visualization. So sometimes what I'll do, I'll just close my eyes or I'll keep my eyes open depending on how good you are at visualizing all right so when you when you get better at visualizations at using your third eye you're able to visualize while your physical eyes are still open but if you have difficulty with visualization you can just start practicing with your eyes closed and you can just repeat it's my intention to heal it's my intention sorry it's my intention to clear my energy field and as soon as you say that you can just visualize a shower of light coming through, helping circulate the energy, helping move the energy, and it goes, just goes through your body, okay? So you can do that as you're, you're launching the intention to heal, all right? So to, to clear, why do I keep saying heal today? <laughs> Most of my videos are about healing, that's probably why. So when you launch the intention to clear, it is so, all right? So that's the first practice. The second practice is introspection and self-awareness <laughs> slash self-awareness, okay? 
Now, this one is super important too because what you're going to find is that when you do this practice properly, it's going to be a preventative practice, meaning that you're doing this to prevent your energy from getting too dense and too heavy to begin with, all right? So this is an important, important step. The more that you're introspective and self-aware of what's going on in your inner environment, your energy will remain less, less dense. So you'll remain in more higher ascended, clearer, purer energy if you're more introspective and self-aware. So what I mean by this is you're going to want to pay particular attention to the two centers in your body that contribute the most to the overall vibration of your electromagnetic field. And that's your mind and your heart, especially your heart. Your heart uh, emits a field that's 50 times stronger than that of the, of the mind, okay? But these two, these two fields, these two centers, they contribute the largest to the overall vibration of your electromagnetic field. So that means that you're going to, to be self-aware means I'm going to be aware of my thoughts and I'm going to be aware of how I'm feeling. So feelings, thoughts, okay? And so when I'm self-aware, I very frequently catch when I'm feeling a little off and I catch it right away before it starts to spiral downward as the day progresses. So if I, if I get up in a crappy mood, I'm not going to let myself be in a crappy mood the whole day because that self-awareness immediately when I catch that, I'm going to say to myself, whoa, you know, what's going on here? <laughs> okay. So self-awareness introspection is a beautiful preventative way of having to clear your energy constantly because you're going to be the gardener. I love to use this. <laughs> I love to use this, this mantra, be the gardener of your heart and mind. Okay. And what does a gardener do? A gardener goes around and they, you know, they'll, they'll trim plants and they'll put fertilizer in the ground and they'll make the gardens look beautiful. They tend to the garden so that it looks beautiful. You have to be the garden of your mind and of your heart also. Okay. Much more of your mind because your heart, it has an expanded view that the mind doesn't. So the heart knows how to tend to itself, but mostly be the gardener of your mind, meaning become more and more conscious of the repetitive thoughts that go on in your mind. And being the gardener of the mind means that you're going to catch those thoughts and then you're going to make a decision whether you want to continue to have those thoughts or not. When I'm introspective and self-aware, it means that my energy won't get bogged down or dense because I'm constantly on the lookout. I'm aware of my thoughts and feelings and that prevents being aware. Remember, awareness, <laughs> awareness is pure, pure consciousness awareness. When you are aware of something, you move energy just with that awareness. All right. So when I'm aware of my thoughts and feelings, what that's doing automatically without me doing anything else, except remaining in a position of awareness, what that's doing is it's preventing my energy from getting stagnant or bogged down. All right. And here's something to remember. Stagnation, ding, ding, <laughs> Stagnation only occurs when I'm unconscious of something. <laughs> okay. Stagnation uh, energy stagnates when I'm unconscious. Okay. This is crucial for you to remember the moment that I become conscious of something, there's no stagnation. The energy starts to move immediately. Okay. The way that I remain self-aware and in a state of introspection is I use a really simple exercise. So pro tip, <laughs> here's a simple exercise that you can use in your daily life to keep you self-aware. And it's the exercise that I call the self checkup. Okay. And the self checkup is very, very easy. Sometimes it's, uh, sometimes it takes a while to spot, but it gets easier as you work with this. So what I do is when I wake up in the morning, one of the first questions that I ask myself, you can put your hand on your heart as you're doing this. So you could literally open your eyes. You're still in bed. You're waking up. You put your hands on your heart and you say out loud or to yourself, how do I feel? <laughs> How do I feel? Just that simple question. How do I feel? And then you assess how you feel. And what you're going to find is that when you are paying attention to how you feel, you're also indirectly paying attention to how, to what you're thinking because your thoughts and your emotions go together. So if I'm feeling crappy, it's probably because I've also been telling a story in my mind that's contributing to the crappiness that I'm feeling. Okay. So this, this little checkup I'll do in the morning, how am I feeling? How do I feel? And I will just assess myself. 
And I'm just going to take a mental note. You don't have to do much. Just take a mental note of how you feel. If you wake up and you're angry, you can just say, wow, I'm a bit angry. Okay, there you go. That Again, that self-awareness is already moving the energy, so you're preventing it from stagnating, which is already a huge step in the whole clearing process. I will also do this practice at night, so I do it at morning and at night. So at night, before I go to sleep, before I close my eyes and I, and I go off to sleep, I'll again say, how do I feel? <laughs> okay? This is crucial. This is crucial that you do this self-check at night because here's the thing. You want to do that self-check before you go to sleep. Otherwise, you're going to be stewing in your emotional content for the next eight hours. So make sure that you're stewing in something good, right? So you're not going to want to go to bed and you're just so pissed off. I'm so pissed off. I had an argument with my lover and I don't want And then, okay, good night. And you fall asleep. You're going to be stewing in that grumpiness your whole, the whole night. Don't do that. So go to bed and as, a, as you're about to fall asleep, just say, how do I feel? And if you're grumpy pants, that's okay. You'll just say, wow, I'm a bit irritated. Okay. I start to move that energy. Everything is okay. All is well. I can figure this out tomorrow. Now I'm going to sleep. You see, as soon as I start changing the dialogue in my head, suddenly I start to feel less irritated and then go to sleep. Okay. So this is a, a this is a crucial exercise that can help you continue to be self-aware. The more self-aware you are, the less clearing you have to do because you won't be stagnating energy. The third practice is vibration, tapping, and touch. <laughs> okay, so these are three different things, but they work on the same thing, so I put them in the same, in the same practice, all right? So before I get into the actual exercises that I use, I just want to remind you that this particular practice of vibration, tapping, and touch, it works on your meridian system, okay? And so if you, if you don't know what meridians are, here's a picture of them. You've got a ton of them. Meridians are basically pathways or circuits where chi circulates in your body, subtle energy circulates in your body. These are tremendously important in the circulation of your subtle energy, okay? So this practice right here, these exercises that I'm going to, to show you, they work specifically on the meridian system. The more that you can keep energy circulating in your meridians, the easier it is to clear, move, and transmute energy. Okay, so the vibration piece is basically what you do is when you vibrate your body, you're moving energy. Vibration is very important in the movement of subtle energy. So vibration could be something as literally you having a vibrator, like one of those massagers, and you just move it along your body. You can do it that way, or you can do just something simple like I'll do in the morning. I'll, I don't know if you can see it, but I'm going to, I'm going to put my feet. I put my feet on the ground here. My heels are nice, nicely sinking in. And then what I'll do is I'll just make my body just nice and relaxed. And I will start to move, vibrate. <laughs> You see what I'm doing? I'm vibrating. So I'm bending my knees really quickly and I'm vibrating my whole body. Sometimes I will do this. I'll do this vibration, this up and down vibration. I'll do this for, I'll put on a music track and I'll do this vibration. This is something I learned in, bio, in bioenergetics. Uh, if when I start to do this vibration, sometimes I will vibrate like this for a whole uh, song, a whole track. A whole track, okay? So this vibration, anytime that you do, um, anytime that you do vibration like this, what you're doing, you're helping the meridian system uh, move, move energy, okay? So vibration is crucial. You can add that to the practice, to your practices. Now to tapping, okay? So tapping's used a lot. I love to use tapping routines in my daily energy clearing. And tapping is where you're going to start tapping. See, I'm tapping on my one meridian point right now. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to explain it because you're, you're going to look up these tapping routines, but tapping is you're going to locate certain meridian points. And when you look up these, these tapping routines, you're going to know where to, where to tap. And so you can tap like this. Sometimes you tap like this. Sometimes you can tap with your whole hand or your fist, like on your chest. I tap like this on my chest to circulate energy in the heart chakra, okay? So you can do, this is this is tapping routines. There's another tapping routine where you're tapping up here and you go around your face, tap, 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 okay? So 
Tapping routines are also great because again, you're working on specific meridian points. When you work on these meridian points, energy starts to circulate immediately. Now, the my favorite routines, tapping routines that I love are from the energy healer Donna Eden. Okay, so look up Donna Eden on YouTube. Just look up Donna Eden energy routine and you're gonna find a ton of her videos. I love her. She's got great, great tapping routines and I use some of her routines every day in the morning. Now for touch. Okay, so touch means that you're gonna run your hands along your skin in different ways, okay? Now, I use two different types of touch. I use um, medium to, to um, deep pressure or touch, and then I use light touch in my routines, okay? So the way that I use touch is, uh, for example, when I get out of the shower and I start to moisturize my body, I'll moisturize my body slowly using firm pressure, medium to firm pressure, and I run through my whole body doing my moisturizing routine, all right? When you touch your skin, you're again helping the meridians, which are right here. <laughs> the skin is crucial in, in, in working with meridians. So when I, when I move my hand on my skin, I'm helping the subtle energy move, all right? So that's one routine I do when I get out of the shower, just moisturize moisturizing my whole body. And then another routine that I do in the morning when I'm doing my morning routine is I will do light touch. So I, I'm dressed and I'm just doing my morning routine and I'll start to just run my hands lightly through my body. So I'm giving you an example here. I'll just run my hands through my arms, through my face, through my head, down my shoulders, down my chest, down, down, down my legs, okay? So I run my hands lightly over my skin, all right? So light touch is also another way of bringing in a good circulation of chi in your meridians. The fourth practice is body movement, okay? So if you haven't been caught on yet, the body, if you move the body, in order to move energy, you've gotta move your body, all right? You don't have to, I could be sitting in meditation not moving anything at all, and I could still be moving energy with the light of my awareness. So it is true that I could move energy without moving my body, but if I move my body while I'm moving energy, it makes it even more powerful, okay? So body movement is crucial. Well, the more that you move your body, the more the energy will circulate, the less likelihood it will stagnate in your system. You've got to remember that your body is your most cherished spiritual tool, <laughs> okay? So a lot of spiritual tr traditions reject the body as something lowly and something that's not good and something that you should be running away from. I disagree completely. Your body is your most cherished spiritual tool and you've got to know how to use it, okay? So, and, and how to keep it well. So body movement is crucial in a daily energy clearing routine. And that could be something like you going every day for a long walk. So it could be something lighter like that, or it could be you running up and down stairs like I love to do. <laughs> okay, so you wanna mix up the types of movements. You can go out for a run, or you can go out for a nice slow walk, or you can literally run sprints up and down the street. You wanna mix the intensity of the body movement from something more leisurely and slower to something faster faster like sprinting or stair climbing or things like that, okay? You want to keep your body movement routines varied, but the bottom line is you just want to move your body every day. So here's a here's a little pro tip, pro tip that I have for the really busy people who sometimes don't have time to go walk, you know, a couple of miles in the forest every day, all right? Keep around some kettlebells. <laughs> okay, kettlebells. If you don't know what kettlebells are, go look them up. Kettlebells are amazing, amazing. It's probably the only piece of exercise equipment that you need in your house. And I love using kettlebells because what I do is I will literally be sitting at the computer, writing, whatever, preparing videos, doing whatever, and then I'll stop and I'll take breaks and I'll get up from the chair, I'll grab a, a kettlebell and I'll start doing some kettlebell swings. I'm not gonna tell you what kettlebell swings are, you can look it up yourself, but Kettlebell swings, I'll do, you know, I'll do a few, whatever, dozens, however many I can do, because if, if the kettlebell's heavy, this is gonna be a, a powerful exercise. 
but I basically pause to swing the kettlebell and then I sit back down and I continue working. <laughs> you see, so I'm constantly moving my body even when I'm in front of my computer, I don't stay there for very long. So my, my daily routines involve movement. I always incorporate movement in my daily routines. I do not, well, I'm not gonna say I do not because I've done that before, but I rarely spend multiple hours in front of a computer without moving, okay? Rarely, and you should do that too. Don't do that. Take multiple breaks, either have some kettlebell swings around or just get up, do some vibration, shaking around, ah, <laughs> shake your body, move your body, go do some stairs, come back, whatever it is, move your body a lot throughout the day, and as you do that, chi is going to circulate and it's going to keep your energy clearer and it's going to prevent it from stagnating. The fifth practice that I use is asking for assistance and the reason that I left this one to last is on purpose <laughs> because I want you guys to master the art of energy clearing without using external support. So I want to train you. I want you to get trained in being a sovereign, powerful, spiritual being who is 100% responsible for the clearing and the gardening of their mind and their hearts and the clearing of their energy, okay? So all these techniques that I've been mentioning to you, they are all within your power. But then we also can ask for assistance, okay? So, so this isn't contradicting my other recommendations. Yes, I ask for assistance all the time. But the reason I brought the other practices up first First is because when I ask for assistance now, I ask for assistance as a way of my guides, my angels, archangels, whoever you want to work with, or source or God energy if you don't want to work with any specific uh, angels or guides, just call on the energy of source, of creator, of God, whatever you want to call it. The reason when I call for assistance now, I don't call for assistance from a victimized position, okay? So when you're still in victim consciousness, you're constantly looking for angels and guides to rescue you and take this energy out of me. No, 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 no. Now you're in a power state, which means that I'm still going to ask for assistance, but I'm going to ask for assistance as a complement to what I'm already doing, okay? You see how different that is? Because here's what's going to happen. If you're not in your power and if you don't take responsibility for the vibration of your own energy system, what's going to happen is you can call on the angels all day long every day, but then if you call on the angels to help you clear and then you turn around and you go about, you know, talking smack about Mary or Joe and they did these horrible things and then you go gossip and you do this and then you, you think negatively all day long, did the angels and the guides help clear your energy? Not really, because you've just polluted it right when you turned around, <laughs> okay? This is very, very common, very common. When I actually started to do my spiritual work, I had a lot of people from the local village where my mom lives. A lot of people would come to me and they would ask me to go clear their homes because there was some kind of bad juju in their homes. And I was new to this, so I wanted to serve, so I would go there and I would clear these people's homes. And I'd clear their home and then I'd walk out, and, but I would talk to the person, to the owner of the home for like five minutes, and then I'd be like, oh my God, I know why, why your house has bad juju or, or negative energy or dense energy. It was because the person was in constant fear-based, negative thoughts, negative feelings. And so guess what would happen, everybody? I'd walk out of the house after just using my energy to clear all that up. I'd walk out of the house, but the person was still there living in negative thought forms, living in really dense emotions. And so I'd walk out and the house would again be filled with dense energy because the person wasn't taking responsibility for the clearing of their own energy, okay? That's why this is crucial. So now you're gonna know, you're gonna take responsibility, you're going to come into pure intention to clear your energy every day, you're going to use the practices that, that I've, that I've uh, talked in, about in this video, and then you can call for assistance also. In the morning what I do, I work with archangels, I work with the angelic realm with archangels a lot, um, but I, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna go into specific entities because each one of you has different religious or spiritual upbringings, and so I don't want to tell you which entities to work with or which angels to call on. You're going to know intuitively who to call on. So if you're in India, 
and you identify with, with the Hindu gods, you may want to call certain gods to help do the, the energy clearing for you. If you're a Christian, you may want to call on archangels or whatever, okay? So different belief systems are going to have different spiritual masters and different energies that you can call upon, all right? So I'm going to leave that up to you to research, to find out which, uh, which beings you want to work with, who do you want to call uh, to assist you. If you don't want to work with specific beings, all you can do is you can call your team in the highest light. I do that every morning. So sometimes I do work with specific archangels like Archangel Michael. I, will, I work with a lot, but sometimes I'll just sit in front of my window in the morning and I'll say, I call on my team in the highest light. You see, I'm not, I'm not pinpointing any particular helper. I'm just saying I'm calling on my team in the highest light so that team can help me in whatever way they want. Sometimes I just call on source energy. So if you want to go directly to the source of all things, to the end manifest, do that. But do that with the intention of that energy complementing, supporting your clearing, not doing the clearing for you, okay? That's crucial. It's crucial for you to remember that, okay? And then what you can do is you can just call on the energy and you can just visualize the energy coming in through your head. I call on my team in the highest light and you just visualize that beautiful energy. Please clear my energy. Please teach me how to work with, with this energy. Please help me circulate. You see, please help. And then I just call them. Please intervene. Okay? I call them. I talk to them. I work with them. I, they help me clear the energy. And then I move on with my day. All right? So there's the fifth tip. Don't be afraid for asking for assistance. Just make sure you're in a position of power when you do that. Now I want to hear from you. Which one of these energy clearing practices are you going to start implementing today? Let me know in the comments below. Click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel or head over to my website and check out some new meditations, free meditations I have for you over there. And remember this playlist here for highly sensitive souls and empaths. If you want to figure out if you're one, check this playlist out. All right, beautiful soul, I am out.